whether we're loving or whether we're confused or whether we're confident in moving forward. In science, we call this the observation effect. In the book, we show a picture of a pollen particle magnified 120,000 times. We bombard that thing with electrons in order to get that image. That's not really the particle that we're looking at. It's the reflection of the electrons off of it. We've already affected the particle by bombarding with electrons. It's an unfortunate side effect that we have in science called the observation effect. When we observe photons, they collapse from a wave to a particle. We can't seem to look at it as a wave. Every time we look at it, it turns to a particle. We explain that so the layman can understand it in the book. The interesting thing is, and lots of people have realized this, they've seen it, but they don't understand the relationship between them. There is a ratio called the golden mean. It's used in nature. Everything divides that way. Uh, plants and animals and, and bacterial populations. When energy is applied along a golden mean ratio, it has a tendency to constructively interfere. It's sort of like like playing tetherball. You ever play tetherball, George? Oh, yeah. Sure. Not well, in a long time. Yeah. I, I haven't played it in a long time either. But if you hit the ball, it goes around. It comes back around to you. But if you swing too soon, then the ball loses its momentum and falls back toward the pole. If you swing too late, same thing. But if you swing exactly at the right time, then decreasing radius all the time, the ball picks up speed and you win the game. That's, that's the whole point. So this is the resonance of how to make intention work. It works along a ratio called the golden mean. Well, gosh, how do you find that golden mean? There was a mathematician whose name was Fibonacci. Lots of people, lots of your listeners are familiar with the Fibonacci sequence. It starts with zero, goes to one, then to two, then three, then five, and so forth. And what you're basically doing is taking the previous number and adding it to the next number to get the third number. Well, by the time you get out there a little ways, about the sixth or seventh or eighth iteration, when you divide the smaller number into the large number, guess what? You get the golden mean, 1.618 to 1. This is the rate of increase from then on. Well, how do you work that, though? I mean, how do you do that in real life? How do you convert that into an intention that functions? How do you work the law of attraction, mathematically speaking? Well, let's take two numbers that are completely unassociated. Let's take 40 and 70. Obviously, those are not Fibonacci sequence numbers. But let's add them together. Okay, you get 110, right? And then you take 110 and you add it to 70, you get 180. If you carry that out and you get to the eighth iteration, guess what? You divide the numbers together, you're right back in the golden mean. We started watching how people intend to do things. In other words, how do you dream? I want a, a purple Honda Shadow motorcycle. I want to be a, a, a marine biologist. And they'll take one or two or three steps toward it, and they lose interest, and they give up. And it never happens. Exactly. What we found from the most successful people we could find, and it worked, whether it was professional athletes, whether they were scientists, whether they were race car drivers, it was the eighth iteration, the eighth try, the eighth door that opened. of 
world's changing? Well, because when you look at the Earth, and you look at the fact that if you follow what we say in the first two books, that the Earth is a combination of two different kinds of energy, a higher vibrational energy that's dynamic and alive and sensitive and, and self-correcting, and a lower set of matter that's acted upon by the universe, it, it looks like